Hey, everybody. It's Mr. Grosso. Uh, I know I'm not going to be able to go over the answers with everybody. And um, because this this part uh, gave a few people some trouble, uh, instead of just showing you guys the answers, I kind of wanted to try and make a video for you guys to go through what the answers are. So the way that you guys were setting this up, all right, is if you look up here, all right, what the constant of proportionality is, is K, and K is always Y over X, all right? And in the equation, it's always Y equals K times X. So whatever is right next to the X, all right, that's your constant of proportionality. So that is what you plug in to the first set of boxes, all right? And since these are whole numbers, we can just put those over one. All right, now going back up here, the constant of proportionality is equal to y over x. So that constant of proportionality is the same as saying y over x here. All right, now if you notice that down here at the tables, you have y and x numbers that you're going to be using and finding and stuff like that. So we have a few x's, we got a couple y's. So what you would do is plug in these values for those specific letters and solve for the other. All right, so for example, these are gonna be really kind of easy because we have ones, and anytime you have a one in the problem, it's gonna be easy, but anyway, I'll just show you guys. So plugging in a two for the X, all right? You would look at the two that you have across from each other and see what you have to multiply to get there. One times what would get you two? That would be two. So you gotta do the same thing for the top. Seven times two would give you the Y, which is 14. Then you move down to the next one. All right, what if we plug in nine this time? All right, one times nine will get us nine. So seven times nine will get us the Y value that goes with it, which will be 63. All right, let's do the seven next here. So if we plug in the seven, one times what will get you seven? That'll be seven. So you do the same thing on the top. Seven times seven will give us 49, all right? Now this last one, we don't have an X, we're missing an X. So we gotta plug in this Y value instead. So that means we're finding the X and the Y is gonna be 42. So seven times what gets you 42? That'd be six. So one times six will give us the X value that we need which is six. All right, and there are the answers for number 13. All right, let's take a look at number 14. Same idea, but we have 15 over one as the constant of proportionality. So we're gonna be plugging in an eight for the X's, because look at the columns, all right? Columns can be in either order, so you gotta look at, see what number you're plugging in for what letter. So we're plugging in eight for the X's, one times eight is eight. So 15 times eight, all right, what would that be? All right, that would be 120. All right, what if we change it to five? All right, one times five is five. So 15 times five would be 75. All right. Sorry, you guys, hold on a second. Sorry, I just had to get a piece of paper for myself. Okay, uh, plugging in a four this time. All right, one times four gives you four. So 15 times four, all right, that's gonna get you 60. And then again, we run down here and we don't have an X this time, we have a Y. So we gotta plug 45 in for the Y, and the X is the one that we're finding out this time. So when we do that, 15 times what gets you 45? That would be three. So one times three should give you that value right there. All right, and those are the answers for 14. Same ideas for 15 and 16. All right, the constant of proportionality is or it's the only numbers that you have in these equations. 
So it's eight over one over there, and it's 12 over one over there. So we got y over x and y over x. So, oops, forget my arrow. All right, so we're gonna plug in three for the x. All right, so one times three gives us three, so eight times three is gonna give us the y, which is 24. Now you guys can jump around. I'm gonna jump around down here and just keep going with the x's first. So this time I'm gonna plug in two, all right? One times two is two, so eight times two will give me 16. All right? Now I'm gonna swing this thing around and have it point to the y's. All right, so now I'm gonna plug in 56 for the y's, all right, and find out what we need for the x. So eight times seven will be 56. So one times seven, that's what the x value needs to be. All right, what if we plug in 64? All right, eight times eight is 64. So one times eight will give us what it is for the x value. All right, while the arrow is still pointing this way, I think I'll just keep going with the y's over here on this one. All right, so if I plug in 60 over here, and 12 times what is going to get you 60? All right, that would be 5. So 1 times 5 gives you the x value, which is going to be 5. All right, if we plug in 72 here instead, 12 times what gives you 72? That would be 6. So 1 times 6 gives you the value for that x value right there. All right, swing this guy back around and take a look at the x values. So we're going to plug in 9 for the x, and the y is the one thing that we're looking at. All right, that's what we need to find. So 1 times 9 is going to give you 9. So 12 times 9 is going to give us that y value. All right, so 12 times 9 is going to be 108. And let's move down here to the 4, plug that in. All right, one times four gives you four, so 12 times four is gonna give you the y, which is 48. All right, there were the first four problems that you guys had, and all of those were just whole numbers. All the rest are gonna be fraction-based. All right, so got those kind of set up already. So start taking a look here. All right, constant of proportionality is two over three. Let's start plugging in some x's. I'm going to plug in 18 here. All right, 3 times 6 would give you 18, so 2 times 6 would be the y value, which is 12. All right, just jump down here to the 6. 3 times 2 gives you 6, so 2 times 2. All right, whatever you guys are doing to the bottom, you also got to do it to the top. All right, that would be 4. All right, let's plug in the 27 this time. 3 times 9 is 27, so 2 times 9 is going to give you the y, which is 18. And then again, we've kind of run into that situation where we don't have the x, we have the y. So we're going to plug the 14 in for the y, and the x is the one that we got to solve for. So 2 times 7 gives us 14, so 3 times 7 will give us that x value that we need of 21. And then let's take a look over here. This time our constant of proportionality is 5 over 4. So if we plug in these x values here, all right, starting with 12, we'll get it going. All right, so 4 times 3 will give you 12. 5 times 3 will give you the y. That'll be 15. And whatever you guys got to do to the bottom to get these numbers, you got to do it to the top and vice versa. Whatever you do to the top, you got to do to the bottom. So 4 times 5 would give you 20. So 5 times 5 would be the 25 for the y. Okay. Plug in 32. 4 times 8 would give you 32. So 4, I'm sorry, 5 times 8 would give you the y value, which is 40. You're just comparing y's and y's at x's and x's all right so this time we got to plug the 20 in for the y because that's what it is 
and we've got to solve for the x because that's what we're missing. So 5 times what would give you 20? All right, that would be 4. So 4 times 4 would give you the x value that we need, which is 16. All right, so there's the first couple with actually fractions instead of whole numbers. It's a little bit more involved because neither of these is 1, so you got to use a little bit more thought. But it's definitely not a problem for any of you guys. All right, so taking a look at this one. All right, let's start with the x's here. So plug in 72 for x this time. So 9 times what gives you 72? All right, that would be 8. So 5 times 8 will give you the y value that we need, which will be 40. All right, jump down here to the 63 while I'm on the x's. All right, 9 times 7 would give you 63. So 5 times 7 will give us 35 that we need. All right, let me swing this guy around. All right, so let's start solving for some y's and start plugging in some x's. I'm sorry, just plugging in some, uh, solve for some x's and start plugging in some y's. Jeez, long there. All right, so five times what would give you 10? That would be two. So nine times two would give you the x value, which is 18. Hop down here. Plug in 15 instead. All right, 5 times what would give you 15? That would be 3. So 9 times 3 would give you the x value, which is 27. So that whole table is finished up. Let me bring this over here and start doing some y's over here. So for this one, if I plug in 63 on the top, 7 times what gives you 63? That would be 9. So 3 times 9 will give me the x value for it, which is 27. All right, let me hop up here, and this time it's 28. 7 times what gives you 28? All right, that would be 4. So 3 times 4 would give you the x value, which is 12. And only two more left. All right, let me plug in the 18 for the x this time. Now we got to solve for the y. <clears throat> so 3 times what would give you 18? That'd be 6. So 7 times 6 would give you the y. That would be 42. And the last one is 15 here. 3 times 5 would give you 15. So 7 times 5 has to be what that y value is. And that's 35 right there. All right, so taking a look at all of these answers and going through the explanations, hopefully that helped out a lot of people and you guys were able to check your answers as well. Hopefully everybody either did really well with it or if you didn't understand it, hopefully this helped you guys and that'll be a little bit more prepared for the problems that you guys are going to work on today. And remember, the assignment for today counts as your attendance, so please log in when you're supposed to be in class and do the assignment. All right? I don't want to have to mark people absent for that kind of stuff.